Uh, welcome all. Uh, I would like to discuss some important questions on this topic of hyponatremia today. Uh, the simple uh, first question, you know, hyponatremia is defined as a serum sodium. So what is the answer? Yeah, so uh, we all know that uh, normal serum sodium is between 135 to 145 millimoles per liter, right, in the plasma. So uh, by definition, therefore, hyponatremia will be uh, option C, that is less than 135 millimoles per liter, right? So you need not mark this as the answer, uh, you know, some, some students might think that this is the middle value, so below this, no, the lower limit we need to consider. So below 135 millimoles per liter, will be hyponatremia and if the values go above 145 then this is what is the definition of hypernatremia right now uh, the last option uh, this value is also something very very important to remember because you know often in clinical practice we find that once a patient uh, with hyponatremia serum sodium falls quickly uh, to below 120 millimoles per liter then at this level, you know, these patients, they start throwing seizures, right? So very, very important clinical finding in these patients, uh, that is the seizure phenomenon. So uh, a repeatedly asked question to you guys that, you know, uh, uh, when does these patients of hyponatremia, they start throwing seizures? And as I said, this value you should know. So uh, particularly if the serum sodium falls quickly to below 120 millimoles per liter, then uh, generalized tonic-clonic seizures can happen to these patients, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, we need to know uh, this fact that uh, most common electrolyte abnormality in our day-to-day -day clinical practice is hyponatremia, right? So this is the most common electrolyte abnormality. Why is it so? Because uh, once, you know, we'll know the important underlying causes to hyponatremia, we will find that you know patients who are suffering from congestive heart failure, patients who are suffering from end-stage renal disease, patients of nephrotic syndrome, right? Uh, patients with liver cirrhosis, right? Patients with adrenal failure, that is Addison's disease, patients of hypothyroidism, right? hypothyroidism. You must have heard of this important condition. We'll discuss this syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone SIADH. Then, you know, our, our post-surgical patients. So after any surgery, uh, you know, we advise the patient to be nil perorally because these anesthetic uh, uh, agents uh, effect are still there and, and patient may have uh, you know, aspirations. Post-surgery, we advise them nil perorally. So, if we uh, give them hypotonic, hypotonic IV fluids, then they may go into hyponatremia. So, this is the most common cause of hyponatremia in the uh, in the surgery department, right? So, all these are important underlying causes to hyponatremia and we can understand, you know, congestive heart failure, end stage renal disease, nephrotic syndrome, cirrhosis. So, all these conditions, you know, combine together. So, this is indeed the most common electrolyte abnormality in day-to-day -day practice. And uh, hyponatremia is a, is a medical emergency. Why? Because, you know, once the serum sodium uh, goes low, then what happens, uh, we, we all understand that sodium, you know, is the principal determinant of plasma osmolality, right? So if you recall in our previous discussions, we have done that uh, the formula to calculate plasma osmolality is 2 into sodium concentration uh, plus glucose in milligrams per deciliter. If this value is, you need to divide it by 18. Similarly, blood urea nitrogen is often reported as milligrams per deciliter. So to convert into millimoles per liter, we have to divide it by 2.8. So uh, as we can see, this sodium is the principal determinant of plasma osmolality. So with hyponatremia, obviously the plasma osmolality goes low. 
and and therefore you know this hyponatremia is often a hypoosmolal state right this is a hypoosmolal state so uh, with hypoosmolality in the ecf right say we have two compartments in our in our uh, so this is ecf and this is the intracellular compartment fluid compartment so what starts happening in hyponatremia once the serum sodium goes low the, the hypoosmolal states uh, happening uh, into the ecf so uh, you know uh, with this situation you can think upon that this water will start moving towards the intracellular compartment because now it is a hypoosmolal state so water concentration goes up here right and and as a result osmosis phenomenon will start so water start will start moving towards the intracellular compartment now uh, uh, with this uh, thing you know what happens these patients they start developing cerebral edema right so throughout the body the uh, cells they go into swelling but the symptoms develop due to the cns uh, cerebral edema formation so initially you know these patients they have uh, these complaints nausea vomiting headache right often uh, we we get this history in our elderly patients that you know they tend to have frequent falls and as the serum sodium uh, goes down further then you know these patients they become uh, disoriented they become drowsy they become stuporous they become comatose right and as i uh, told you previously also that particularly if there is a force sharp fall in serum sodium to below 120 millimoles per liter value then you know these patients they may throw generalized tonic tonic seizures also right so uh, important thing to know is that you know uh, hyponatremia is a is a medical emergency so we can uh, think of these uh, symptomatology another thing is that the symptoms are primarily related to the cns and i have uh, explained how this happens right okay now uh, before uh, discussing the various causes to hyponatremia we need to discuss this very important condition you know what is this pseudo hyponatremia so pseudo hyponatremia means that it is a false hyponatremia actually there is not hyponatremia it is just that the the lab is showing an error right so uh, how this happens basically and what are its underlying causes now there are three important underlying causes to pseudo hyponatremia and you need to remember you know these three very important underlying causes one is a hyper uh, proteinuria state hyper proteinemia state right and uh, this is you know our plasma cell disorders like multiple myeloma uh if we have an increased triglycerides or lipoproteins right so familial uh, hyper uh, lipoproteinemia isolated familial hypertriglyceridemia so if we have elevated very much elevated triglycerides and lipoproteins then uh, you know uh, while we are performing this uh, transurethral resection of the prostate so post this transurethral resection of the prostate you know uh, we we irrigate the bladder while doing this surgery uh, with the glycine solution so uh, after this you know these patients they may develop uh, pseudo hyponatremia now uh, uh, what is the pseudo hyponatremia because as i said uh, serum sodium are found to be low but but the the uh, it is just a lab error right and not the true hyponatremia so how it happens basically so we we all know that you know serum sodium uh, word we use or uh, we are actually detecting the sodium in the plasma and the plasma we we all understand is what right plasma is 93% water 
and 7% of the plasma is made up of the solid uh, things in the plasma and what are these solid things the plasma proteins you know uh, albumin globulins right you know, and others or these uh, triglycerides and lipoproteins we have in the uh, plasma 7% remaining right so uh, you know uh, this lab test uh, the conventional lab test for detection of uh, plasma sodium is how they interpret sodium is an ion and it is dissolved in this 93% portion of the plasma right so what these tests are doing that you know they are actually detecting the sodium in this 93% part of the plasma but you know they are considering the uh, 100% you can say uh, of the plasma right 7% solid phase also they are including in that so they are actually i mean sodium is actually present in the 93 part uh, which is the water part of the plasma you know in this water portion only we have these dissolved electrolytes right so uh, but the test is considering the entire volume of the plasma right so uh, there is already a little uh, you can say uh, dilution effect but uh, once you know if the if the solid phase you know goes up say uh, globulin fracture is going up and we have this condition of multiple myeloma hmm, we have that m band uh, similarly the triglycerides or the other lipoproteins are going up or you know during this surgery we are using this glycine uh, rich solution and this glycine is adding on to the solid part of the plasma then you know uh, what will be the scenario say instead of the 7% now because of these elevated values uh, say it has gone up to 15% so now the test will be detecting you know uh, sodium in 85 portion of the plasma as i said they have supposed now gone to 15% but the uh, uh, entire volume will be considered as to be the 100 only so this is a test fallacy right and and uh, then we can uh, uh, easily make out that you know in this part the sodium will be found to be further low obviously as compared to the this situation right so this is what is called as pseudo hyponatremia so since actually the sodium levels are normal in the plasma therefore very important thing to know is that plasma osmolality in this situation is absolutely normal right so normal plasma osmolality we know the formula we have just done 2 into sodium plus glucose by 18 plus blood urea nitrogen divided by 2.8 and normal value is say 282 to 95 millimoles or milli osmoles per uh, kg or per liter whatever right so uh, the, the plasma osmolality tends to be absolutely normal with pseudo hyponatremia conditions right so i show you uh, an important question right say uh, we have a 68 year old patient uh, with multiple myeloma so this is uh, the typical age group for multiple myeloma to develop typically in elderly patients uh, though uh, uh, if you recall that uh, Uh, i mean if you uh, are aware of that uh, uh, actress lisa uh, ray i think so she was uh, detected to be having multiple myeloma so at times it happens in young age also but this is a typical age to develop multiple myeloma and this patient is in uh, on this typical regime to treat this uh, very important hematological malignancy in fact you know multiple myeloma is the second most uh, important second most common Uh, hematological malignancy you know after these lymphomas so lymphomas are the most common hematological malignancies you should know and multiple myeloma is the second most common so uh, on this typical uh, you know regime of dexamethasone bortezomib and lenalidomide this patient is on and uh, this patient presented in the medical emergency with severe bone pain so this is one of the clinical presentation of multiple myeloma so there are osteolytic uh, you know metastases uh, into the uh, bone so that is why uh, this these bone pains in these patients now kidney function test was done uh, multiple myeloma involves kidney also 
So serum sodium, you know, was found to be 126 millimoles per liter, right? So reading till here, if you are not aware of the uh, pseudo hyponatremia kind of situation, then one will clearly, you know, uh, know that uh, we are dealing with hyponatremia. So and then uh, it is mentioned that his plasma osmolality was normal to 90 milliosmoles per liter, right? So uh, this is a case of pseudo hyponatremia. Mind you, you know, this patient, this patient has presented to us with severe bone pains only. If you recall, the symptoms of hyponatremia are related to the CNS only, you know, cerebral edema, I told you, so nausea, vomiting, headache, frequent falls, these are the manifestations, clinical manifestations, and later on, drowsiness, uh, seizures, and coma kind of situation. So this patient is not reporting any such CNS manifestations, right? And, and the question is, what should be the treatment? So uh, just to, you know, attract us, uh, the, the hyponatremia we typically manage with this 3% NACL. So these are not the uh, answers to these, uh, to, 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 you know, water restriction also uh, is a treatment modality in SIADH patients. We'll discuss this. Uh, tolveptin is a V2 receptor antagonist. So tolveptin also we use in congestive heart failure patients in our SIADH patients. So, you know, these are the typical treatment we use in the true hyponatremia. So, answer to this question is nothing needs to be done here. This is a case of pseudo-hyponatremia. So, always remember multiple myeloma, hypertriglyceridemia, hyperlipoproteinemia. So, the question may be changed that we have a patient with familial hyperlipoproteinemia and TGs and LDL levels are very, very high, you know, and uh, uh, the serum sodium is found to be so same kind of question they can form or similarly they may ask that you know we have uh, done this DURP procedure in this patient we use that glycine solution to irrigate the bladder at the time of doing that DURP and uh, post-surgery the serum sodium is found to be this much uh, the, the serum osmolality uh, will be normal so what needs to be so in all these three situations nothing needs to be done right so this is pseudo hyponatremia so, uh, one more question, uh, we have a 50-year-old type 2 diabetes mellitus patient on irregular medications and uh, he presented with generalized weakness, right? So, the weakness is because he's on irregular medication and the sugar value is 700. So, uh, the muscles are not going to use this uh, sugar. And that is why this generalized weakness. And uh, again, you know, serum sodium is found to be 130 millimoles per liter, right? Uh, interestingly, blood, blood urea nitrogen is slightly elevated. 10 to 20 is the normal value. Serum osmolality is 310. So we know the normal value, 285 or 280 to 295 milliosmoles per kg. This is the normal serum osmolality. So this is a hyperosmolal state and why hyperosmolal? Because sugar is very high. Huh? So in that formula, if you recall, uh, glucose we need to divide by 18 since it is in milligrams per deciliter. So glucose is very much elevated and that is why the, the serum osmolality is high. Now, uh, serum sodium is low. Now, if you recall uh, my discussion on diabetic ketoacidosis and that uh, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, so we, we, we found that, you know, serum sodium was low at the time of presentation in those patients. But serum osmolality is high. So uh, we were discussing that, you know, uh, hyponatremia is a, is a hypoosmolal state, usually. This is what I told you previously. So, uh, so most commonly, you know, remember this this way, that hyponatremia most commonly is a hypoosmolal state. But... If the plasma osmolality is normal, then it is, as we have done, pseudo hyponatremia and three important conditions we need to remember always multiple myeloma, hyperlipoproteinemia, triglyceridemia and lipoproteinemias and lastly that post-URP patients who have been irrigated with glycine rich solution. And, and third possibility is that, you know, sometimes this hyponatremia is hyperosmolal state also, right? 
So what are the classical uh, causes where the hyponatremia is a hyperosmolal state? So here if we have uncontrolled diabetes, then you know because of the glucose the plasma osmolality is high. And, and what is the mechanism of hyponatremia here? So now it is the reverse thing which is happening, right? So uh, glucose levels are elevated here in the plasma and therefore the plasma osmolality has gone up. So now osmosis of water will occur from the intracellular compartment towards outside, right? And, and, and as a result, the, the uh, serum sodium goes below here and, and therefore, you know, we describe this hyponatremia as dilutional hyponatremia also, right? So uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or instead of the sugar, if some other osmotically active solute is present in the plasma and it is increasing the osmolality, thereby causing the water shifts from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment. So then, uh, you know, for example, if we have used mannitol, so this uh, diuretic, uh, osmotic diuretic, we often use in our CNS patients to control the intracranial tension. Right, to bring down the intracranial tension. So similarly, glycerol also. So mannitol, glycerol, uncontrolled diabetes, these conditions are hyperosmolal hyponatremia conditions. So I said just a dilutional uh, hyponatremia, right? So here again, you know, the same question, uh, which of the following is true statement? So again, you know, uh, we need not treat uh, these patients on the line of true hyponatremia he should be managed, you know, with regard to this hyperglycemia. So if you control the sugar, the, the hyponatremia will automatically correct uh, on its own, right? So uh, that's all for today. Uh, next, uh, we'll take up the uh, most common, you know, hypoosmolal variety of hyponatremia in great details. So again, you know, go through this topic, very, very important topic. As I said, this is the most common electrolyte disturbance in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. So uh, do go through uh, with any of your textbook of medicine you're following. And, uh, you know, just an important uh, thing I want to tell you that with regard to this uh, ENT4 entrance exam uh, book, uh, well, because of the uh, lockdown going on, right, so I don't think that 5th edition is possible this year. Uh, well, if it will be able to come out, the publisher, if they will be able to release it and, and let you know. But for the timing, this 4th uh, edition uh, only have to go for, right. So do go through it. You will be highly benefited. Thanks.